Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have the Mudita Compact and in this specific case we're going to go over side-loaded applications. This is just to show you what can you expect if you purchase this device with the intention to sideload a few applications. This is not the intended purpose of the device, but since a lot of you have asked questions, I'm going to do this demo uh, essentially. So uh, the apps in white are the apps that come with the device and the apps in kind of like darkened or black kind of icons are the ones that I have sideloaded. In order to sideload, you need to go to settings and you need to go to about, uh, build number, and then after that, you need to do uh, a few extra things like ADB. So you need to be a little bit proficient in uh, technology, using a desktop and sideloading applications. In order to make app installation faster, I sideloaded the Aurora store. So as you see right here, this is an example of how it's going to look. It's black and white. Um, and you can download extra applications. If you want to look for compatibility of applications, I highly recommend you check out Plexus. Plexus is an app repository that will tell you whether your app will work with the Google devices. This is a the Google device. So search it up there and you know, make sure that you use that resource to make to understand whether the application that you want or need will work with your device. Here is WhatsApp. So there's my dad and I send him a hi. Uh, I sideload a Gboard as well to showcase swipe capabilities. As you see right there, I did hello, but it is a little bit sluggish because it's not the keyboard designed for the device. However, you can have this keyboard if you wanted to, Gboard, Swift Key, whatever it is that you prefer. And you have the ability as well to uh, use the audio engine. It's going to be pretty fast actually, but again, there's going to be a little bit of lag here and there. Uh, in certain instances because of the refresh rate. But as you see right there, it's pretty good. And you can send, you can call, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. You can join the communities, make phone calls, and also do video calls with WhatsApp. Signal, again, all of the apps. Make sure to check Plexus if you have a specific app that you want. Uh, there is a, a streaming app here. I'm showcasing how it works for music. And you're able to do streaming pretty much without any issues. I don't use Spotify. I don't have a Spotify account, so I cannot showcase Spotify. But again, Spotify works if you have an account because it doesn't need Google Play services. That's what you need to be looking for for these side loaded apps is does it need the Google Play services or not? I also did all launcher uh, to showcase what it, what it can look like with a different launcher. Um, and I like it. I think it's pretty good, pretty clean. Uh, you can look into the settings and whatnot. And right there, boom, you know, look at all of the apps that you need. And it's kind of an example if you want a simpler, even more basic uh, launcher instead of the icon based launcher, you can have a completely, you know, text based launcher, which I personally prefer. I also did Libby uh, in order to do audiobooks and Audible will work. Again, Plexus, make sure to check out that resource that is going to be most helpful for you. But with Libby, you can get your kind of library card. And again, the UI is not optimized because these are side-loaded applications. Um, but it works well. It's pretty smooth for what it is, pretty legible. I did not have any issues. And you can open the audiobook and listen to the audiobook without any issues as well. Um, I did some keyboard mapping and some extra stuff, but that is not uh, extremely relevant. I also did AntennaPod, which is my preferred application for podcasts and you can listen to pretty much all of the podcasts that you want. Again, as you see, the darker the icons are, the more difficulties you may have because again, not optimized for the screen. And I want to showcase one example, but as you see, everything is pretty smooth, but I want to showcase one example where I think this is going to be very noticeable optimized versus not optimized applications. I side loaded the organic maps application. And as you see right here, uh, you know, it's pretty fine. Here is my area here in Denver. And you can look up pretty much everything. I have put the transit. And right there, once you get closer, you can see the buildings and some of the streets. However, the application from Mudita, so when you go to the actual maps application from Mudita, is a little bit more optimized for this e-ink screen. So as you see right here, we are going to go to a similar area. 
and the contrast has just been kind of like upped a little bit. And the reason why is because they have the ability to uh, optimize these resources for the their maps application. So as you can see right here, it's some of the same general area, but it's populated with more information because they're optimizing it for this e-ink screen. Still is going to do a lot of refreshes. And this is just what you can have as of now. This is kind of like a December tester device and I'm just keeping you with the updates. But as you see, you can see the, the streets a little bit more defined, uh, better contrast. Whereas with the organic maps, it was a little bit more plain. Um, you did not have that contrast right there. So you can still see the streets, but they are not necessarily laid out in the best format so that the phone can read it. And I think that's a few of the things that you're going to see that are optimized versus not optimized. So for example, the weather app, it's going to be optimized for the best screen refresh ratio and the best information for your area versus if you load a application, even if it's a good application, it may not look the best for your usage. I mean, here, Antenna Pod, right? Like, you know, it, it looks pretty fine and, you know, you're able to navigate and do most of the things that you actually need to do. However, is which, which kind of experience do you want to have? Do you want to have the experience that was intended for the device or do you want to add those one or two things that you, you know, maybe require in your life? They're going to still be available, but they're not going to be super addictive because again, it's not going to be optimized for it. Uh, last test that I want to showcase to you is the browser. So as you see right there, uh, this is a sports page. Images are, eh, you know, <laughs> pretty muted uh, for the most part but you could browse the web if that's something that is required for your job or something like that. However, I will notice that sometimes this crashes. So the usage, whenever you're using a browser, maybe it is because of the RAM management. As of right now, it's crashing sometimes, not a lot of the times, but I have seen it kind of like go in and out. I have used e-ink bro and that one crashed a little bit more than DuckDuckGo. Uh, these are browsers that I've used, you know, things like that. Besides that, the phone is actually getting a little bit better and better when it comes to fast and refreshing of like, for example, the e-reader. Uh, you will have to connect to the Mudita Center to have some of those files showcased. Um, but the camera, the calendar functionality, everything, the refresh rate, as you see, it's just a little bit better for the usage of the screen whenever you have an optimized app. And I expect them to continue making improvements as of right now. I have been using this device as my primary personal device for a week and a half. Um, my light phone died, so I kind of switched to this and it has been pretty good. You know, I haven't had a lot of usage on distracting apps because honestly i wouldn't load anything that is distracting on this phone because it's an e-ink screen so it gets the job done and i have also used it in this mode with o launcher and i, I personally prefer the text-based interface but if you like icons you know you still have it uh, battery life is continues to get better and better and i have been able to use it three four days without many issues phone calls are clear text messages are pretty good and um group text messages uh, have been working better now. So a lot of good progress for the Mudita Compact. Of course, I mean, some of the icons are just going to be a little bit uglier than what you expect, but that's okay because the performance of this device is just going to continue improving, improving, improving. And I'm getting a hardware refresh, uh, hopefully now in January. So I will be showcasing that to you guys with the hardware refresh, maybe the apps will be a little bit smoother. The e-ink screen will be a little bit better even for those side-loaded apps. But I'm really happy uh, to showcase this to you. Um, some apps are just completely not optimized. Like this one, like Neo Store um, is just not good. <laughs> In my personal experience, it has been just kind of funky to use and to um, have that ability to kind of like, okay, how does it work? And again, at some point in time, you, sh you, see, you see it slow it down, especially with the side-loaded apps. Uh, and I think the reason why is because, again, that lack of optimization. But whenever you go into a uh, screen right here, as you see, it takes, takes a little bit longer, but it gets there eventually. And it just kind of looks eh, a little bit fuzzy or a little bit here and there, just because, again, it's not meant for an e-ink screen. 
but it gets the job done, which if you're getting this device to have and use it in its intended purpose, but you need one or two extra apps, I think it's going to be a perfect device for that use case scenario with great battery life, great um, compact uh, usage for you know one one handed use, especially with Gboard. Again, I think this device is just getting better and better, and we'll see what the competition brings so that we can understand, okay, which one is the better device for you. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about this device or any of the other devices that I have reviewed, you can put it in the comments below and I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.